This video is sponsored by Brush Galaxy. Okay, how would you feel if you could draw this too? Well, I'm going to break it down into steps that are way easier to follow than you might imagine so that you can have a go and amaze yourself. Okay, so as explained in the intro, I'm going to break this down into steps so that you learn the painting process as well as the app that I'm using, Procreate. But that isn't to say that you couldn't use a different app on a different tablet and still follow along. But within the app Procreate, I'm using one of their default A4 canvases, which is 297 by 210 millimeters at 300 dpi. And in terms of the color profile, it's again one of the defaults within Procreate is the sRGB and it's the code that ends in 2.1. In terms of the brushes this week, I'm going to be using within Procreate, Artistic Crayon within Sketching. Within Drawing, I'm going to be using the Oberon brush. I have amended it and I will show you how to do that when we get to the appropriate point. Within Calligraphy, I'm going to use the Mono Line. Within Airbrushing, I'm going to be using the Soft Brush. And within Luminance, I'm going to be using the Light Pen and maybe the Bokeh Lights possibly the Glimmer 2, we shall see. In terms of the colours, I've only got seven colours for this tutorial, super simple. And if you go into the value section, each of the colours that are in the palette has associated with it a hexadecimal code. If you look in the video description, all the codes are listed. You just need to type them into this box one at a time, press enter, the colour appears up here, and then you can tap it together into the palette yourself. Or next to the codes in the description is a link that takes you to my Patreon page. You can download the colour file for free. And Patreon is the place where you can support this channel, gain access to exclusive content, including extended versions of these tutorials. I'd like to say a massive thank you to those people who have supported me in the past or who are currently doing so. It makes a huge difference in my ability to keep motivated and keep doing what I do here at my channel. So thank you genuinely so much for that. And with all that said and done, Let's get started. So on our first layer, layer one, we're going to go to the wrench symbol. We're going to put on drawing assist. And by default, it's usually this grid. But we want to edit that. So we're going to go to the edit drawing guide. I'm going to go for symmetry. And then we go to the options. And I'm going to put it onto the quadrant option. Click done. And done again. I'm going to go to my brushes. I'm going to use within calligraphy, the mono line. I'm just going to go for something dark, so maybe the first colour. I'm going to put the brush size, well, maybe about 5%, 100% opacity. And we're going to start in the upper section, and whatever we do on one side will be mirrored on the other. If you hold it, it will snap into a more precise shape, and it will also be mirrored in this horizontal line down to the other side. And that just really speeds up the whole process, much more efficient. And then working down to the center point, we're going to do a variety of shapes. Snap and hold, or hold and it snaps rather. Create some smaller shapes, other some larger ones. Hold it, maybe some chunkier ones like this, and some longer ones. Create a little bit of a thicker shape here. Perhaps I don't want that to be as long, perhaps I'll create it more like this. Now, you absolutely don't need to stick slavishly to what I'm showing you. You can create your own, whatever you think works best. And then perhaps we'll just do another little shape there in the center, just to join it together. Now yours might look completely different than this, and that is fine. You never know quite what you're going to come up with when we start duplicating these layers. If you've ever done the snowflake cutting out of paper, then it's always just a really interesting point when you start to open it out see what you've got, and it's the same kind of reveal at this point, because we're going to go to the layers, slide and duplicate it. We're going to go to the transform, and instead of using any of the horizontal, vertical, or rotate here, we're going to rotate it from the little green circle round until the little box that appears says 60 degrees, precisely like that. Then we can go to that new layer, slide and duplicate it, then again to the transform. This time we are just going to flip it horizontally and there we have our design. Now again, yours will look different than this. No matter how much you would have tried perhaps to replicate what I've shown you, it will end up being slightly different. 
and that's a good thing. At this point we can go and if we see anything we want to change we could close up areas for example so we've got a nice six pointed star there in the center as well. I'm going to create a new layer, tap on the layer and put again on drawing assist. It will stick to the same reflections that we've just used. I'm going to go to the top, I'm going to do point, bring a line down on the left until a suitable point, hold it, should snap to a line and then just pinch it together to get a slightly narrower version. I think that was better and you can see it's reflected down there too. Again, slide, duplicate, move it down, transform from the little green until we get to precisely 60 degrees again and we know it's absolutely perfect. And again with that layer, slide and duplicate, transform, flip horizontally and there you go. Now we've got spikes that connect everything together as well. I'm going to go to all of those layers and I'm going to go and pinch them all together. Now it's all on one layer. I'm going to go to my background and I'm going to tap it, go to the black area and double tap and it goes completely black. You can still just about see the snowflake. I will probably go to the layer that has the snowflake and maybe go to the adjustments, hue saturation and brightness and just turn the brightness up to 55% so you can really see it better. And on that same layer, we're going to go to the selection, automatic, and we're going to grab the background. Now this was the reason I closed up those little sections there. Had I not done that, it would have selected some of the shapes internally there as well, which might not be a problem, but I knew that would happen and I wanted to keep that as a more solid shape. But now we've got this, we want to go and invert that selection. So now we've got everything on the inside of that snowflake selected. Go to our layers and create a new layer, layer two. I'm gonna to go to my colors, I'm gonna choose the white. I'm gonna to go to my brushes, I'm gonna to go to sketching and the artistic, or rather the artist crayon. I'm gonna put the size at 15% and 100% opacity. And I'm just gonna lightly graze this across the surface all over. I don't want it to be completely consistent. I'm okay for to be some gaps here and there. That's fine. Then I'm going to go to the adjustments, chromatic aberration, and I'm going to go to displace. Don't change the sliders, but I'm going to slide that across. Not very much at all. So we'll just backwards. Just, it doesn't give you really a percentage, but just so you can start to see some blurring, some hints of colors perhaps emerging. You can start to see little colors depending on where you move it to. So it wants to be subtle like that. Deselect the adjustments, but we're gonna take it even further. So select it again, go to the hue saturation and brightness. I'm gonna turn the saturation up. It's gonna be subtle. Adjustments, adjustments again, hue saturation and brightness. Turn the saturation up and do this a few times. Repeat the process and it's just going to ramp it up. It's not gonna change it too dramatically, but it is gonna just push it a little bit further. Then I'm gonna to go to the hue and I'm gonna move it from 50 to about 55%. And it's just brought some slightly cooler colors. Deselect the adjustments, select it again. And this time we're gonna go for the Gaussian blur. I'm gonna blur that in now to about the 5%. Deselect that. And I'm really pleased with that kind of mottled look. It's given some kind of sense of fractal colors that are emerging through light going through crystals. We can also deselect the selection, and this is what we've ended up with so far. So we're using default brushes in this tutorial, but if you'd like to bring your art to the next level, you could try premium brushes from Brush Galaxy. Brush Galaxy enables you to unlock over 50,000 premium Procreate brushes for a fraction of the price, and you can access over 20 different categories such as fur, lettering, nature, animals, and many others. So for example, a quick search of snow and the results give you tons of different winter and snow brushes, which could be really useful for adding that extra something to your artwork. Start now and get the first seven days for free and join thousands of other artists using Brush Galaxy tools to bring that art to the next level. The link is in the comments and in the description.
Okay, I'm going to go to layer one that had the lines on it. I'm going to tap on the N and scroll it down to about 50%. We can still see the lines. They are still there as a guide, but we don't want them to remain too much in the final outcome. I'm going to go to the top layer, create a new layer on top of that, go to the N, tap on it, scroll down, change it to the add blend mode. Going to go to our brushes, we're going to use the light pen within luminance. On our colours, we're going to go for the first colour. Going to put it at around 10% size and about 60% opacity. Another note to make is on this layer, we're going to tap on it. And we're going to put on the drawing assist again. That means that anything we add here is going to be mirrored below. So we're going to scroll up and we're going to use this now to start to bring out some of those lines a little bit more clearly. You can follow around them and it's going to bring out a more satisfying glow. And anything we've added here instantly reflects there. I would suggest that we don't press too hard. It's very tempting to just get a bit carried away, press too hard at this stage, but it, I think subtlety is going to be better. I'm not too worried about neatness, although we use the hold to snap to a straight line as the guide. Actually, for this section, snowflakes aren't necessarily completely perfect. You will see something a bit more like a nibbled edge if you look at a real snowflake. So it's okay if it has those little wobbles and imperfections. That's actually something that could add a little bit of character. In fact, I might even just deliberately put them in a little bit, just to make them look a little bit more organic. It just takes a few minutes, a couple of minutes really, to trace round all of these shapes. Again, let's make them a little less regular. Introduce some slight imperfections here and there. I think actually it, it will do the image some good. Okay, and that's very quickly gone all the way around the outer edge. But then obviously we have shapes in the center too. So look for things that you think are quite interesting. I've got a nice diamond shape here that I'm going to bring out, for example. And I can't say for definite what will appear in yours. Obviously yours will be unique in its own way. But I'm just going to bring out some extra details, make more of a feature of them. I'm going to bring out, for example, the hexagon in the center. I'll do that again. So if you do a line there and then a line there, then it should create a nice hexagon for you. And we could continue to bring out some of the shapes that have been subtly disguised in there too. Try that again. You can ad lib a little bit, make more of some of them. Why not? There's no right and wrong. Creating patterns, whatever looks attractive to you. You might just zoom in, for example, just go around some of these lines a little bit more in that center area. Exaggerate some of those. Create a nice glow in the center. Now we've also got the lines that create spikes, so we need to honor those. We need to go along there, hold, and it will snap. Go along to the point, hold, and it will snap. We need to do it two sides on this part. Hold, there we go, and that's done it all the way around. And before I do anything else, I'm going to go to the bottom layer, create a new layer, and it will put it above, so I'm going to move it and put it underneath. Whoops, perhaps with the finger is a little bit easier. Put it at the very bottom. I'm going to go with my airbrushing, soft brush. I'm going to put it to about 30% size, about 30% opacity. Go to my colors. I'm going to choose the second color on our palette. And I'm just going to bring some sweeps of this into the background. It doesn't need to be completely consistent. I'm going to have it generally a bit lighter at the bottom, however. I just want to start introducing some of the general sense of colour into our scene. Something like this. And that's just helping putting it a little bit better in perspective. One thing we can do with our layers is go to layer 2, tap on it where the little n is and scroll down to add. It doesn't really make a difference, but it does enable us to merge layers together if they're on the same blend mode. So we've changed that to an add. 
We can probably at this point too go back to the layer one, untick it, it's not really needed, it's not adding very much. And then we can take the top two layers and pinch them together so that they are on one layer now. Okay, from the top layer, I'll create a new layer, layer four. Again, change the blend mode from normal to add. Again, we're going to go in with a light pen with an luminance. And again, we're going to use the first color. 10% size, 60% opacity. And it does have some variation. So you press lightly, it's very dim. Or you press hard and you get a much more vibrant version. Again, I'm going to put on the drawing assist. And now I can just create some extra little anomalies in the center. Just run down the length of some of these prongs. So shapes, little like crystal like things that are just growing on there. Just adding a further complication. A bit more complexity. I think it adds value. And we could just duplicate the layer, but I want to keep it a little bit more organic than that. So I'm okay for there to be some slight differences. It just means that now, obviously, I just need to do both sides on this particular one. And it's not a big problem. You can kind of replicate some shapes on either side quite easily. And it will duplicate what I'm doing on the other shapes, the other prongs, quite easily. They're not, they don't need to be exactly precise anyway, as I was saying before. And they don't need to match the other ones we've just created. But you can see it adds just another element to these that I think works. If you feel it's too strong, you can always go to the A and just dial it back until you find wherever works. So maybe at 100% it's a little bit too powerful. So maybe something more about the 60%. And again, we can tap on it and we can merge down. So it's all in one layer again. From the top, I'm going to create a new layer again. And again, we're going to scroll down from the normal to the add. This time I'm going to go with the light pen luminance and to my colors, probably going to go for the second color. And most importantly, this time we're not putting on the drawing assist. I don't want it to be the same in each area. So I'll keep it the 10% size, 60% opacity. And you can see it's quite a bit lighter, but I'm going to just imagine where the light's coming from now. So I'm going to imagine the light's coming from above, maybe slightly to, from the side in this direction, which means that it's likely to hit certain edges in a slightly different way and corners too. So find a corner up here that would be hitting the light or the light would be hitting it rather in a slightly different way. We can have it running the length of the lines to a point, but not as much. We can zoom in maybe along that line and we can have it joined up up here, make a bit more of it. This line, for example, is kind of angled up to where we said the light might be coming from. So you could add more to this line. Rotate it if you find it easier to work with it. And you can start to give some kind of sense of 3D-ness, more so anyway. So anything that points towards the top is going to have more light on it. The corners, give it some points. Let's find another area, for example. So maybe the top point here, that edge. Slightly less that one, but certainly these edges are going to catch the light more. Move along to this one, the corner, the light's coming here, for example, it's going to cut across here. Start to bring out some of these edges a little bit more, makes it look more 3D. as well as rolling along that edge of the spike as well. Just starting to real, bring some real life into it. And again, move down to the lower areas, perhaps the top of some of these shapes, which are going to catch the light a bit more. 
Now, obviously light that comes through shapes isn't necessarily gonna be 100% predictable. It might be that some of the bottom edges, for example, just kind of pull some of the light into that bottom area. So vary it up a little bit. It doesn't need to be completely consistent in that way, but there might be a general trend that works in the way that I've outlined. Sometimes the way that light refracts around translucent shapes, especially kind of, kind of crystal-like shapes, is just a little less predictable. But either way, to vary it up a little bit, and corners are always a flashpoint for concentrated kind of light. So spend some time just working on some of those. So it could be that any edges that are gonna immediately catch the light at the top edge might also just collect it in the bottom edge. Same for here, but maybe those, because they run alongside where the light beams would come, maybe they are just skipping that. It's not reflecting it back. Whereas they will, will represent an edge where the light hits it, both the top and the, the bottom of it. But there isn't really a hard and fast rule for this. You can just see what works. Keep zooming in and out. See what perhaps you want to make more of. This edge along here, for example, I want to make more of that. Hold it, there you go. And perhaps less so these ones because they're going to run with the direction of the light a little bit. I will do just a light hint of it there, but not as much. Again, some bottom edges might just pull the light in the corners and things. Whatever works for your design, it might be that you want to add some more highlights along this section of yours. Again, whatever you've done, you can just kind of work roughly into them. None of this needs to necessarily have a huge amount of time spent on it. Honestly, I'm quite enjoying adding these little elements. It's not something that I find hard work in a really time consuming way and want to spend the time on it because I'm enjoying the effect of it. Go over some of the lines, make them shine, make them pop a little bit more. Why not? And we're starting to get this glass-like appearance of it now that I think is starting to really work. Again, get some points if they're immediately pointed or some lines in a point. Maybe one down there. move it along. Again, so the light is coming down here. This is an edge that's going to catch it, but also the bottom edge, though it's pointed away from it, is still running kind of in a way where the light comes here and it hits it as a, a line like that. So wherever it hits it as a line like this, this line is going to be illuminated. So the line, for example, of the light might be coming down here, in that direction, which means that when it hits something like that it's going to illuminate it but when it runs almost parallel with it it's going to be a little less so a little bit difficult to get that point across but i hope that makes sense so it's going to run down here and hit that edge whereas this edge it runs kind of with the light so it doesn't reflect it here it runs where it hits like a wall it bounces it but when it runs parallel with it it's less illuminated that one's a little less parallel, so that can be a bit brighter, again, for this one. And you can see how that could potentially work. I don't know how much that is based in the actual reality of it, but that's the kind of the way I'm thinking about it myself anyway. If you are an expert in the way that light refracts around shapes, and I'm talking total gibberish, then do excuse me. But I think that it actually makes some sense for this drawing, and it seems to be bringing out a quality that kind of works. Sometimes we can have theories that just seem to work well enough for the drawing we created, a certain situation, and then if it works, it works. Again, I'm being quite loose with these. You know, there is no absolute precision to this anyway. 
we start with something that's quite precise, so it definitely would be underpinned by something that is, is quite accurate, but then on top of it, you can allow shapes where we're a little less regular. We could even go and add extra irregularities, so I'm just pressing on lightly with this, but there's nothing to say that we wouldn't have little extra shapes that are just growing as add-ons. I think actually adds a really nice kind of organic quality on top of the kind of mathematical looking shapes too. So add some inconsistencies, some irregularities, some little ice crystals perhaps that have just broken or growing on it in a slightly less conforming way. You can do as little or as many of those as you like. Or as few, I should probably say. Okay, I'm going to go to those two layers and pinch them together, merge them together. Therefore, we've got Snowflake on one layer. I'm actually going to transform, reduce it in scale. I've got it on uniform, so it's not going to squash it. I'm going to move it central. I want to leave some space at the bottom, put it roughly in the middle, like so. I might just get rid of that first layer. So now we've literally only got the Snowflake and a background layer color that we've added as well as the actual original background that's in black now okay i'm going to go to layer four create a new layer on top of that keep the blend mode on normal this time i'm going to go to my airbrushing soft brush i'm going to go in with the third color i'm going to have the size at 10 percent whoops and the strength at about 25 percent and just in this lower section i'm going to sweep across here just going to take out the bottom edge of that snowflake a little bit and bring it all the way across like that. Tap on it, put on the alpha lock, go to my colors. I'm going to use the fifth color, 10% size still, but only about 3% opacity. And just in that center area, just brighten it up a little bit more, but not too much just a hint more like that. I'm then going to go to the fourth color. I'm going to put it down to about 4%. And again, pretty low still, about 10% opacity. And we have the alpha lock on. So I'm just going to run along the top edge with this, like so. And back to the layer, turn the alpha lock off. And we're going to go to the adjustments. Gaussian blur, and we're going to blur it to about 10%. And that's going to create just a hint of a background. We're then going to go to our layers and create a new layer. Again, leave the blend mode on normal. This time we're going to go to our brushes, drawing, Oberon brush, but we're going to slide and reset it. Tap on it again. We're going to go to the stroke path, change the spacing to 50%. Click done. Going to go to our colors and go to the fifth color five percent size and about 40 percent strength I'll zoom in a touch and i want the snowflake to be kind of wedged in the snow but then there's a section here now where we're going to see some textures where it's actually stuck in now this is not entirely accurate because you know, a snowflake, really, when you think about snow, it is made up of tiny pieces of snowflake. This is kind of like a surreal version. I just want to give it something of an environment anyway. So we're abandoning the strict accuracy of what a snowflake would look like in an environment close up, more for just artistic license. So I'm just creating a bit of a mount, a mound for it to sit on. Just using this, it has a kind of granular quality, which is ideal for what we're going for here. I'm leaving some gaps. The gaps are just as important as the texture. 
we can have it just sort of dissipating out at the edges. Emphasize it a bit more in the center again. Then we're going to go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur, blur it in to about the 10%. Create a new layer, layer five. And we are going to continue. We're not going to change anything. We wanted a, a soft kind of base to then go in and add some more of the sharper textures. Once more. But obviously we can use what's already there as a kind of guide. Again, the light is coming from the top, bouncing off anything that just sticks up, but also you're gonna get shadow areas too. Maybe some bits that just catch the light on top a bit more. Perhaps we could even turn it down to 3%. Let it catch the light a little bit more and maybe even turn the opacity up maybe 80%. Change our brush, we go for the second color. And within the kind of shadow parts, put it up again to maybe about 7% size, 80% opacity. And even within the shadow areas, you know, we're not gonna have a complete emptiness texture definitely want some variation. Once we've got a buildup of this, we can go to our adjustments, Gaussian blur, and blur it in again. Not quite as much this time, maybe about 5%. Create a new layer, layer six. Go back to the fifth color, still with the Oberon brush, 3% size, 80% opacity. In fact, we're gonna change to the sixth color, why not? We need to go a bit brighter. We can just start bringing in some more textures. I'm just kind of tapping it in a little bit more, creating points of texture in the mix. Going around some of the already highlighted areas and just making even more of a feature. Some of those bringing the kind of sense of sparkle. Light just picking up on some of these shapes a little bit more. We are going to blur this again in the section. So we're using a lot of the blur, it really does help just build up an effect more gradually. Perhaps we'll change to softer color again, the fifth. Still pretty bright, but not quite as bright. Bring that in the mix a little bit more, maybe turn it down 30%. So we have it kind of trailing off on the edges. We want the real brightness to be in the center. That's where we have our focal point, our interesting area to look at. We don't want too much of a distraction elsewhere. Again, adjustments, Gaussian blur, blur it in, less so this time. So again, maybe about 4% this time. Create a new layer. We'll go for the white this time, let's be bold. 3% size, let's put it to 50% strength. And yeah, we just, we really want to bring out some of the brightness at this point. Just tap it in though. Okay, I'm gonna to go to the airbrushing soft brush. 4% size, 10% opacity with that white. And I'm just gonna bring it over the top just to further kind of expand some of the glow, some of the luminance. I think that works. I'm actually gonna to go to my colors, so the color disc. I think I'd like to add a slightly brighter color in here. Don't worry. It will always be there in the color download and in the codes that you're looking at. If you wondered why there was an extra color, it's because I'm adding it now. I'm gonna put it 5% size, 10% opacity, and I think I just want this brighter color in the mix, just fusing them together a little bit on either side. 
and it relates better to the blues we've got at the top as well. So I'm going to put it down now to 2% size. Tap it in a few more times just along that very top. Like so. And then I'm going to go back to layer 3. Same colour, 20% size, even softer, so 5% opacity, and just bring it in a little bit more at some of these top areas. Remember, we have a strong light coming from up here, so it should probably catch any atmospheric things here and there too. It can be mottled, that's absolutely fine. What I'm going to do now with all of those layers is I'm going to pinch them together. A bit tricky to do, but there you go. So all in one layer. I'm going to go to the snowflake with the eraser set to the soft brush with an airbrushing 2% size, 50% opacity, and I just need to have the snowflake in the snow. So I just need to get rid of some of it. I'm going to go to the bottom layer with the soft brush, go to my colors. I'm going to use the second color. 2% size, 50% opacity, and I'm just going to have a sense of shadow in here as well a little bit. So I don't expect the snowflake to be casting a really dark shadow, but I don't want it to have no impact. I think it doesn't make a lot of sense for it to not do anything, so just a hint of a shadow resulting from the snowflake itself. Back on the snowflake, I'm going to go to the adjustments, bloom, and I'm going to scroll it up. Now you can decide to what extent you want it to really glow. I think 100% is a little bit too much, but maybe 50%. Perhaps we can go to the snowflake again. Adjustments, hue, saturation, and brightness. You can try with the saturation. Maybe it's a little bit too strong at 50%. Maybe you want to have it even more exaggerated. I'm going to dial it back a little bit to about 40 percent. I'm also perhaps going to create a new layer, change the blend mode again from normal to add. I'm going to go in with the light, luminance light pen. I'm going to put it on the, well not quite the white, but the sixth color along. And I just really perhaps with a 10 percent size and 100 percent opacity, just want to create some really nice points of light. Really push it a little bit in places. It's okay to have some of the detail bleached out. Just have it really catching the light in some of the points that we imagine that the light would really bounce off. We don't want to do it everywhere. We want to be a little bit selective of it for it to work best. That really ramps it up in some areas. Something else we can play with the background, go to the background adjustments, perspective blur, and we want our focal point to be kind of down here, roughly speaking, and then we can slide it across and it's just going to blur anything on the peripheral. Save the focus for the center. You can have it to a greater or lesser extent. So I think something about the 40% looks just about right, keeps the focus in the center, just softens it on the edges. I think that's nice. Overall, I think it's working pretty well, but we need some just an extra bit of something in the background. So we're just going to add something extra as a background detail. So we'll go to the very background we've got, create a new layer on top, change the blend mode from normal to add once more, go to our brushes, go for the bokeh lights. Now I'll we'll reset it, but I actually want them more spaced apart. So tap on it, Spacing is at 26, so we'll put it up to about 70. We'll put the size at around 60, 100% opacity, and we're going to go for the blue on the end, the eighth color. I'm just going to do a sweep of that across, and if you're not happy whether it lands, just keep trialing that out until you're happiest with it. I don't want to do too much of it, so I'm just going to keep trialing it until I'm happiest with it. Couple down there, perhaps. Couple there. Could also then go to the adjustments, Gaussian blur. Blur that across, 20%. Try it again a couple of times. Get a few layers of it that way. 
Again, adjustments, Gaussian blur. This time, blur it across. This time to about 15. And one more time, just so we're getting a few kind of layers of it. I don't like it down in the bottom area. I think I just want to keep that a bit more open. That looks good. Adjustments, Gaussian blur. And again, just across a bit less this time. So about 8%. I'm going to create one more layer, layer five, change the blend mode from normal to add once more. Back to my brushes, luminance, glimmer. I'm going to reset it. That's what it should be, but I'm going to tap on it and change the spacing to max. 100% size, 100% opacity, and again with the blue color and just a couple. And I really just want a couple. I don't want to add too much. I think it could be very easy to distract away from the snowflake and I just want it near the very edges so I'm going to go back to the beginning of that again a couple there in the corner just a little bit there and a little bit there stay on the same layer with the blend mode on add I'm going to go to the light pen once more I might as well stay with the blue it's light enough 100% 100% on both the sliders a touch of it there just to create a little bit of a glow I could even then extend that with the soft brush with an airbrushing same color Maybe 15% size, 15% opacity, and just tap that in a few times. It just really builds out a glow. I could even do that a few points around the snowflake to ramp it up. 5% size, 5% opacity, and we can just build in a little bit more brightness in this bottom area too. Not too much. We don't really need it. And just a little bit more up here as well. It's going to be easy to get carried away with this. We need to learn to know when to stop. So I'm going to leave it here at this point. I hope you've enjoyed following along. Leave me a comment, maybe a suggestion of the kind of things that you want to see in the future. Whatever you think. Don't forget to subscribe and I shall catch you back here soon. Bye for now.